Yo guys, it's Feinberg, and in this video, I got a new Minecraft personal best speedrun that I'm gonna react to and analyze. This is currently the second fastest Minecraft speedrun ever at the time that I'm recording this. So without further ado, let's get right into the run. Uh, and I'd like to just preface it by saying that I was in a call while I was doing this run offline, and I sort of messed up the audio recording a little bit. So there's gonna be no game audio, but we're just gonna put some Minecraft music over the background and it'll be good. Uh, anyways, spawn next to a village, Found this blacksmith, got three iron, which is great. It means I can get a bucket and then kill the golem to get an iron pickaxe, enter the nether pretty quickly. And you might've missed it, but just behind me there, while I was on the roof of that blacksmith, I saw a lava pool. So I know where I'm gonna go to enter the nether, build my uh, nether portal from that lava pool. So this is already turning out to be a pretty good overworld. I'm pretty confident in knowing what I'm gonna do. So I'm just getting my tools here set up so that I can kill this golem and get all the stuff I need for the entry. So, like I said, just standard survival stuff, getting all the tools. It's kind of funny that they're all a different, um, like, type. You know, stone, iron, diamond. I got that one diamond from the blacksmith. Pretty cool. Uh, anyways, we're just going to kill the golem here. And if you stack up three blocks, the golems are uh, dumb and they can't kill you. So, that's pretty great. Just end up critting out this golem here. No big deal. And we get four iron, which is awesome because I can make a bucket and then have one left over for the flint and seal to light the nether portal. Uh, I don't have to do wood lighting or any of that jazz. So here I'm just heading over to this gravel patch that I saw earlier to get my flint. And unfortunately, the game doesn't want to give me flint for a while. I think I mine about 20 gravel here before I get one flint. You know, it happens. It, you just got to suck it up and deal with it. Yeah, the run could have been faster if I got that flint, but... It's all good. So I'm just getting, you know, my extra wood there so I can craft beds later and, you know, have some blocks if I need them. And heading over to the lava pool that I saw earlier to build my nether portal. And I do a little bit of a fancy trick here with this lava and water, sort of building the portal shape already for me in the lava pool. Uh, pretty advanced. There's a lot of tutorials if you want to learn how to do portals yourself sometime. But yeah, that's it. And I'm in the nether at just under or just over two minutes looking for a entity spike to find a bastion and I found it and I'm scanning for where it is also found where it is and luckily this ravine that I spawn in right here usually spawning in ravines are pretty bad but it just ends up opening right into this crazy just open nether terrain and I can see the bastion already so it's already looking to be a good run getting a bastion fast is a uh, definitely essential for a top run because you're going to need to go to the bastion get all your trades then go to the fortress and luckily there, it was only on the screen for a couple seconds, but I saw the fortress also right next to the bastion. So I know exactly what I need to do in this nether already. I, there's gonna be no sort of guesswork. Everything's just sort of in my face. Definitely pretty lucky, um, but you know, I'll take it, right? Makes up for that flint luck earlier in the overworld. So yeah, just heading over to the bastion here. And another super lucky thing is it ends up being a bridge bastion and it's oriented perfectly to where I can just roll up right on these gold blocks in the bastion and just start you know getting it done start mining the skull that i'm gonna need to trade with the piglins don't have to enter in some weird area run through any danger just right here at the gold blocks super easy so i end up getting 13. Uh, i thought you know for a second that i could have crafted some golden apples to get some you know regen some better food but i then just sort of realized that five bread and five apples is just enough for how fast this run ends up being so i didn't end up crafting golden apples which is whatever anyways i run this bastion route here I'm gonna break a gold block to get these piglins mad at me on purpose so that they all sort of follow me into one hole that i'm gonna make for them to trade all their gold so i'm getting these pigs mad but it's a good thing because i'm making this too deep hole here and they're all gonna get distracted by the gold the little goblins they are and they're gonna all fall in just as easy as that, except for the one gold that I missed, which is unlucky. So I just get these extra few pigs here, get them all in the hole, and they start trading. Check these chests here, and I get 20 obsidian from that one chest, which is absolutely insane. And that means I'm going to have enough obsidian to build not one, but two nether portals to exit the nether and then find the stronghold and hopefully teleport into the stronghold later in the run, uh, which we'll see if I do or not in just a few minutes. Uh, so here I'm actually going to do what's called a pearl hang, a little bit of an advanced strategy, but I'm going to throw an ender pearl and unload it by decreasing my render distance so that these chunks aren't loaded anymore. And that means that this pearl is sort of just waiting for me to up my render distance again to, to where I can teleport because I'm going to have to go back to these piglins 
get those trades. And instead of uh, running all the way back on this bridge and then throwing the pearl, I can just instantly warp, saving a few seconds. So just a, a little minor time save there because uh, there's nothing really else for me to do in this bastion other than wait for these pigs to give me the stuff. And so I come back and they're just done. Uh, there's literally one gold left here. Uh, they gave me all this stuff. Three fire resistance is crazy. Three stacks of pearls, two stacks of string. Uh, and I'm getting to the fortress already at under or just about five minutes. And I start doing a low render distance strats in the fortress to try and get blazes to spawn as close to me as possible. And it works really well here. I get four blazes, not from a spawner, just in this little corner of the fortress, which is awesome. You know, and the best case scenario, you kill six blazes, you get six blaze rods. That's enough for your 12 eyes vendor. Um, and so getting four this quickly is amazing. Uh, I end up getting three rods, which again is a little lucky. On average, you would get you would go two for four. It's like a 50-50. Um, so getting three is definitely above average. And I'm just sort of trying to run to these extra blazes here that are still spawning close to me because of the low render. But I end up having to kill just a couple wither skellies, magma cubes along the way. There's a skeleton under here in a second, just because all the mobs that spawn, they're not always going to be blazes. That's obviously what we hope for. It's just only blazes. But unfortunately, fortresses do spawn other mobs and we kind of just have to deal with it. So I've been killing all these mobs so that I can kill my blazes. And unfortunately, I get a little unlucky here at the end with those two not dropping. So I have to kill this third one. But overall, I think I killed nine blazes and had six drop, which is pretty lucky by all things considered. On average, you would have to kill 12 to get six blaze rods to drop. So I'm definitely not complaining. Um, and here I'm going to use calculated travel, which is a really precise form of finding the stronghold. I'm measuring these eyes super precisely. So I'm actually gonna like line up my crosshair at a specific pixel of the eye, pausing a lot to make sure I get it. And then I'm gonna throw another one so that this calculator in the top right, just above me, um, is gonna tell me exactly where the stronghold is and where I'm gonna need to build my second nether portal so that I can warp right into the stronghold. So I measure my second eye there. It tells me that the stronghold's 360 blocks away. So now I know in the nether where I have to go to build my second portal and get into the stronghold 100% of the time, um, which is, you know, a great strat for consistency and it's just going to end up working out. So all I need to do in the nether is just get to those coordinates. Uh, they're not on screen anymore, but I have them like on my second monitor while I'm playing. So I know where I'm going and it turns out that I get to this tree over here and I'm already there. I just have to dig down now so that when I build this portal, instead of putting me on the surface in the overworld, it's going to put me actually in the stronghold. Uh, so I don't have to dig down in the overworld and sort of reorient myself. It'll just put me right in there. So I dig down until where I'm sort of at the same Y level that the stronghold's going to be at. And I build my second nether portal with all that obsidian I got from trades at mid seven minutes, like 724, which is crazy pace, barely world record pace if everything else goes perfectly. Um, but I set up this strategy here called preemptive. It's kind of like that bastion x-ray that we did earlier, but for uh, the portal room in the stronghold. And it ends up working perfectly also. Uh, it was pretty obvious that this portal room was over here. So I just ended up running, letting the stronghold take me in the right direction. And I'm in the end at seven minutes and 40 seconds. So it's technically world record pace at this point. Uh, the world record's eight minutes and 37 seconds. So if I get like a really, really fast dragon perch, I could technically get the world record. So I'm definitely pretty nervous. Um, Got to craft my beds just in case it goes instantly. Um, I didn't end up doing a, a riskier uh, end strat called zero cycle, uh, just because like I said, I was really nervous at this point. So I didn't want to do anything that was really hard that I could mess up. And honestly, I just really don't practice it that much. I'm not super good at the strategy. So I didn't want to mess it up. I just wanted to play it to sort of get lucky with the dragon perch here. Um, and as we'll see in a bit, it wasn't the best dragon perch, but it went fast enough for me to get second. So, I mean, I can't complain. Uh, it wasn't, like I said, the fastest, but it's going to end up going right here. And I'll just let my live reaction sort of play out um, as to how I was feeling in the moment. Oh, my God. 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 Yes! Oh my god! 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 Dude, there's no way! 
but it ends up being a final time of nine minutes and six seconds, which uh, is second place currently on the leaderboards, assuming that the mods check out all my files, figure out that I didn't cheat anywhere, stuff like that. Um, so I was definitely super pumped. This is the highest I've ever been on the speedrun leaderboards for random seed glitchless. Uh, the highest I'd been before this was third, so still trying to get that world record. I'll be live on Twitch almost daily if you want to check me out in the description. Uh, all my socials will be down there. But I hope you guys learned something. I hope you thought the run was cool. Uh, if you have any suggestions for things that I could explain further or any questions about anything I did in the run that you'd like to know more about it, you can leave those in the comments and I'll be sure to read every single one and answer any questions you might have about stuff that you found confusing, anything like that. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoy the run. See you next time.